I would like to thank the Focus to Sound Foundation uh, for giving us the opportunity to present our early phase one uh, data for uh, our current study at Columbia for using non-invasive focused ultrasound with panobinostat for children with progressive diffuse midline glioma. Um, the, uh, at, here at Columbia University Medical Center, the biomedical engineering uh, department, namely uh, Professor uh, Elisa Konofagu uh, with her team, have created a novel device for the use of focused ultrasound that is non-invasive. And uh, as probably Dr. Konofau probably has the opportunity to describe in details during this um, symposium, it consists of a, a 0.25 megahertz transducer, a transducer tracker, a position sensor, a passive cavitation detector, and these images will merge with the uh, MRI that we have uh, pre-uploaded um, and we are able with the detector to very targetably um, um, use the uh, frequencies with the use of microbubbles at the same time to open the blood-brain barrier. Their um, uh, work um, was initially um, demonstrated in the laboratory that it is feasible um, with uh, various animal models. And um, uh, the same thing, Dr. Wu from uh, Radiation Oncology at our department has demonstrated that that was also feasible in, at the preclinical level in, in um, animal models with diffuse midline gliomas. The more importantly, uh, Dr. Konofago's team uh, has, uh, before we opened our study, had opened an adult study with Alzheimer's disease, uh, which they, uh, where they demonstrated the feasibility of opening the blood brain barrier in um, adults in a volume of uh, four even uh, cubic centimeters. Uh, this allowed us to uh, start the process for submitting our proposal to FDA and the various uh, regulatory committees to open our pediatric study for diffuse midline gliomas. So what is our study? Our study um, examines the feasibility of uh, use of this non-invasive focus ultrasound of microbubbles with concomitant oral panobinostat in children with progressive diffuse midline gliomas. This is, a, again, a first uh, pilot study with uh, estimated uh, requirement for number of persons of 15 subjects and a duration of um, a follow-up of approximately two years. The main objective for this study is to evaluate the safety and the feasibility of uh, using focus ultrasound to open one, two, or three tumor sites for administration of um, panobinostat in children with progressive diffuse midline glioma. And for this, we evaluate with uh, physical examination laboratory studies. Our secondary points um, uh, is, uh, are mainly uh, aimed to determine the blood brain barrier with uh, imaging changes um, uh, that uh, using the focus ultrasound. And this is documented by changes in the MRI. Uh, primarily with the contrast enhancement, and we have some softwares where we are able to evaluate changes in the K trans. Uh, we are also evaluating the cell free DNA, primarily from blood, various uh, and, and sites and time points, and also we evaluate the six month progression free survival uh, using the strategy. So, what are the eligibility criteria? This is for persons 4 to 21 years of age and they have to have evidence of progressive diffuse midline glioma. Uh, biopsy is not absolute requirement, but um, uh, it is um, as long as we have radiographic and clinical diagnosis, or if we have H3K27 uh, mutation uh, confirmed by a biopsy for diffuse midline glioma. 
Now we use the various uh, time points for um, uh, the time periods that uh, allow us uh, a washout period before we consider the patients for treatment. The uh, most important one to mention is the use of radiotherapy for at least one month um, before the patients are able to enroll in the study and for um, other um, cell therapies, uh, we uh, also um, require to have at least six weeks uh, post-treatment. Also, uh, uh, in terms of the eligibility criteria, we, uh, we have um, uh, set up a, a demonstration of um, normal organ function performance status uh, before we consider the patients for treatment. Now, why panobinostat? Panobinostat um, has been demonstrated to be uh, the, at least the most promising agent in terms of the um, uh, diffuse midline gliomas as be demonstrated by the UCSF team many years ago. Um, and also, um, the, uh, there are two other reasons. One is that we wanted to select a medication which one is potentially active. Second, the penetration of the CSF is debated uh, at, and most likely very minimal. Uh, and uh, third, and most importantly, the dosing of panobinos that is very convenient for the use of focused ultrasound in the way that we um, evaluate the, the, the right timings for, for the focused ultrasound. Because as Dr. Konofawa and Dr. Wu have demonstrated, there is a, a, a approximately within 24 to 36 hours after the opening, we anticipate the closure. Uh, of the blood-brain barrier and panobimus that is given three days a week. So what is the, our uh, study consists of? It's a phase one study, as we said, is for patients with progressive slash recurrent uh, diffuse midline gliomas, evaluating the feasibility of escalating the number, number of tumor sites uh, to open the blood-brain barrier. So what happens practically to the patient is uh, the patient will uh, come to the radiation oncology department, will have the sonication uh, with a focused um, uh, ultrasound, will have the micro bubbles, and within minutes after that, we will have the oral panobinostat. And uh, depending on the cycle, we will evaluate with MRIs within two to four hours the opening of the blood brain barrier. And every um, in every other cycle, we will uh, also have a repeat MRI on day three to confirm that the, the blood-brain barrier has been closed. And how will we evaluate that? Again, by evaluating of a new contrast enhancement uh, that is apparent in the uh, MRI. The, so we are able this way with this treatment to have multiple openings within a week. Uh, of the blood-brain barrier with concurrent panobinostat exactly at the same time. So it is two weeks on, one week off treatment, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. In a, uh, and the, do the dose of panobinostat is fixed. However, the number of sites in, within the tumor that we open the blood-brain barrier uh, is escalated uh, uh, after the uh, first two cycles. So it's an intrapatient uh, number of sites escalation. The, uh, all this patient is, uh, all this treatment is outpatient. Uh, the patients uh, do not experience any pain uh, other than maybe minimal discomfort of position in their head. We don't use anesthesia. Uh, these are in the graphs. We demonstrate the uh, cavitation level with the injection of micro bubbles, where we can see the peak straight away as soon as we inject the micro bubbles. And um, practically, the duration of the treatment is only um, 30 minutes. Uh, the what do we know so far? So, so we have treated already three patients. The ages were 10, 14, and 18 years. There were 12. 11 and 13 months post diagnosis at the time of enrollment. They all had biopsy proven H3K287 mutation, uh, and uh, two of these three patients had already had re radiation after treatment. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, there were no uh, severe adverse events. 
there were only some very mild um, side effects such as uh, vomiting and diarrhea in terms of the toxicity grade one and two. There was one patient who has suffered COVID in between the cycles who, who in fact required hospitalization, uh, but um, improved within three days uh, with the use of remdesivir um, and uh, steroids. Of these patients, of these three patients that we have treated so far, one has progressed on treatment after the first cycle, soon after the treatment, and two of the three patients um, had uh, the uh, uh, clinical improvement uh, after the second and third cycle with a follow-up time five, four, and three months. So it's still very early, but we need to keep in mind these are patients with progressive diffuse midline glioma, and to see clinical improvement with tapering doses of, of steroids is uh, quite um, uh, promising despite the very tiny, small number of patients. Uh, we have uh, 12 more patients to go to complete the treatment. So uh, this is a, an example of where we see the opening within two to four hours after the uh, sonication, where we see uh, a slightly increased flare um, um, signal in the area of exactly where we opened the, we intended to open the blood-brain barrier. Uh, you can see the slight um, uh, contrast enhancement, which uh, 48 to 72 hour, hours after that practically nearly disappears, uh, indicating that uh, it is feasible to do this with uh, using a non-invasive ultrasound, at least as it is demonstrated by the, uh, this uh, early data in the small number of patients. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have um, 12 more patients uh, to go. Um, and we'd like to thank our team, uh, Dr. Konofagu, Dr. Wu, Andrea Webster, our fellow, uh, Donis Pouliopoulos, Robin G, Omid Yousefian, Catherine Liu, um, and Anai, and Mirko Kostis, and Zangenberg, and all our um, uh, fun, supporting founders, uh, especially Guy and Gail Fangel Family Foundation and uh, Jacob and Maggie Dyson. Thank you very much for your attention.